Hey guys, so here is chapter five for Hound Dog True. Um, let's start reading. Always Maddie had been shy. Okay, so this word here, shy, is a character trait that the author explicitly tells us, meaning um, we didn't have to figure anything out. The author tell, is telling us that Maddie is shy, and we also talked about that in like chapter one too. Okay, let's read. Always school had made her feel skittish and small. Always it had taken a while to warm up to things, to people. But most nights she had slept easily. Until fourth grade. Until star. Maddie had talked to her once, said just one word. In the coat room behind the cinder block wall in the back of Mrs. D'Angelo's classroom, Maddie was sitting on the bench, half hid by the winter coat, by winter coats, switching her recess boots for shoes. Star didn't see her, wasn't looking for her. Star was looking in coat pockets, oh, in backpacks, slipping change out of them, putting that change in her own pocket. Oh no. Maddie watched Star come up on her backpack, watched her pull the zipper around and down, watched her reach deep inside and find no change. <gasps> Can you imagine watching somebody going in your backpack looking for change? Oh my gosh, I don't think we'd be very happy. You guys would be yelling. Anyways, let's keep reading. Um, okay, watched her pull the zipper around and down, watched her deep inside and find no change. Saw her find Maddie's own yellow notebook, private, written on it big and red. <gasps> Maddie turned to stone, watching Star turn pages, hearing her say words out loud. No bad outrun. Star had, Star said some words in sound out ways. Afraid for afraid. Castly instead of castle. Star was reading Maddie's stories. She was holding Maddie's notebook open flat in one hand, the other hand pointing down the lines, turning pages, reading Maddie's words. So she's like reading her diary. Can you imagine? She knows, Maddie thought, though what Star knew Maddie couldn't say exactly. Something important was all, something true. Maddie held her breath and watched, waited for Star to look up at her there in the coat room waited for Star to see her, to hear her stories and really see her, and for everything to be different after that. She'd give Maddie some of the coins she stole, maybe, or ask Maddie would she share her lunch so she didn't have to steal coins anymore? Take, go, Red Star. She stopped, looking sideways at the page. Ogree, she sounded out. Ogre. That was Maddie's voice. Star saw Maddie then. Saw her in saw her for a second and then looked on through her, fist crunching Maddie's story page, tearing it from the others, letting it drop to the floor with the winter boots. Melted snow sucked up into it and turned it dark. Ogre, Star said. She tore another page and dropped it too, and another, and another, until the floor was thick with papers, and the notebook nothing but a twist of wire and the private cover. Star shoved that back into Maddie's backpack. Oh, gree, Star said, and it became a magic word. Oh, gree, oh, gree. Star grew bigger and bigger until she touched the ceiling and filled the coat room. And Maddie knew Star would swallow her whole. Okay, so here in this paragraph, our main character is envisioning Maddie as an actual ogre, which is like Shrek, um, which you guys probably know. Oh, chapter six. That was a good ending to chapter five. I can't wait to read the next chapter with you. Um, 
comment on Teams, anything that you have questions about or comments about. Um, all right, thanks guys.